Hi guys, it's Davin here at Brubits.com. Behind the camera as usual we've got James. Say hello James. Right guys, today I thought we would brew up a Moulton Smuggler Special. This is one of my uh, personal favourites. Uh, very good beer for summer. Um, it's one of our best selling beer kits that we've got at Brewbits. Um, and if you ever get the chance to brew it up, you will see why. So, what are we going to need to brew it up? Well, first of all we're going to need a bucket. Um, we're going to need um, a jug so we can do some measuring. We're going to need a siphon, a long spoon, a thermometer, a hydrometer. And my hydrometer I use a trial jar. And then at the end, once it's all brewed up, we're going to need to put it in something. So we can either use bottles, or a barrel, or a mixture of both. Right, so there's one other ingredient that you are going to need when you are brewing all this. It doesn't take too long at this stage, but it does help to keep my vocal cords nice and lubricated. And that's a glass of, well, here I've got cider. You choose your own special tipple. Right. Let's get brewing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see what's in our box of smuggler specials. So, in we go, and in here you will find a little leaflet which tells you all about the Munson's beers, this is the other varieties. Uh, we've got a little sachet of yeast, and then we've got one can, two cans, and that's it. Not very much. In these two cans, is everything that we're going to need to be able to brew this beer up along with our sachet of yeast. Now in these cans is our malt extract, so that's where our uh, grains have already been um, steeped in hot water for a long period of time to get as much of the sugar out as possible and then they've concentrated down the liquid that they've got from that and they've put it into these two cans. Now in here is a really really thick gloopy liquid and if I was just to open the cans right now, we would be stood here for absolutely ages trying to pour it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bowl of hot water and then I'm going to put my cans in it. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm also going to get the kettle on because I'm going to need some boiling water. So, in they go. Kettle's on, and we'll let them steep for a bit. So our beers have been, uh, or the cans of malt extract I should say, have been sat in my hot water now for probably a good five to almost ten minutes. So it's time to take them out, dry them off with a quick tea towel, nice clean tea towel, and then of course you're going to need your tin opener. Now, here I've got my sterilised bucket, if you don't know how to sterilise, then go watch our video which shows you how to sterilise. And I need a new tin opener. <laughs> now this is really thick and really, really gloopy. And if you touch it like that, you'll get it everywhere. There we go. Pouring it nicely, thickly. And as always, because this is malt extract, if you like Maltesers, or if you like the malty bits that you get on a Mars bar, this is a lovely flavour, a lovely smell. Right, so tin number two. As you saw, there was still quite a lot of malt extract in the tin, but about that too much for the moment because we are going to get that out, that's not going to go to waste. Okay, here's tin number two. And you'll notice I'm not quite going the full hog and taking the lid right off. That's just me. Now you can stand here for absolutely ages if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. Okay, once we've emptied the majority of the malt extract out of the tins, we now need to add six pints of boiling water to our malt extract in the bucket. But remember I said there was quite a lot of malt extract still in here, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a pint, I'm 
going to gently pour it into tin number one. I'm going to take another pint. Pour that into tin number two. And then any more pints. So that's pint number three going into the bucket. Pint number four, and I need to top up my kettle again. But what we can do now is if we take our long spoon, we can gently, making sure you don't get any of the boiling water over yourself, work the malt extract that's in the bottom of the tins and liquefy it up even more and then it'll be ready to pour in. So, let me just top up the kettle. Pint five. Am I gonna squeeze six pints out? Very closely. I didn't quite put just enough in, but that will be fine. Okay, and I've been working my cans whilst I've been waiting for my kettle to boil. So I don't burn myself, I'm just going to take a tea towel, like so. And that gets poured in as well. Look at all that extra malt extract that's come out. And look, clean cans. That means we've got all the goodness we could possibly need. Okay, that's lovely. So what we need to do now is in the bottom of here, we've got a lot of thick gloop and a lot of hot water. So what you need to do is keep giving a good stir until none of this gloop sticks to your spoon like this. So the next part we need to do is, I'm quite lucky here, I've got a tap with a really long lead on, is we need to take our bucket up to our five gallon mark, the 23 litre mark, and that needs to be done with cold water. Now, when you're pouring cold water into here, if you've got a long tap like I have, don't just pour it in like this. So, don't just drop it in like that, because beer has a tendency to froth up. So you want to run it down the side of the bucket, otherwise, when it gets to about here, you're going to have this much froth all trying to come out the top. So do it nice and gently, and we're going to take up the 23 litre mark, 5 gallon mark, cold water. So our 23 litre mark, that's the five gallon mark, and now we've got a lot of water at the top, and we just need to give it a good stir and mix all of the viscous, thick, syrupy, malt extract, hot boiling liquid at the bottom, with all that lovely cold water that we've just added in. Go and have a look, James. You can see I've managed to keep the froth down to the, a minimum. And it's a lovely, multi colour. Give it a good old stir, make sure it's all mixed in. So once it's all stirred in, it's all mixed up. I've then taken a, a reading with our hydrometer, I've taken a sample in the trial jar, and it's coming out at 1.050. Now note this down, because we're going to use this at the end to calculate exactly how much alcohol is in our beer. So, remember what I said earlier, everything that was going to come into contact with the liquid had to be sterilised. So I've sterilised my hydrometer and I've sterilised my trial jar. And I just pop that back in as well, so you don't lose anything. And now, the important part is to check the temperature of our beer. And it needs to be in the region of 18 to 22 possibly up to 25 if you're finding it's a bit warm um, but no hotter and no colder because what we need to do now is we need to pitch our yeast and that is coming out exactly 20 degrees so we're going to take our sachet of yeast and with a pair of scissors just gently snip the top off go on in James because all we're going to do is just gently all the way over the top like that. And we're gonna leave it like that. Now then, we now need to take a top, 
top two sides down. That will allow any gases to um, escape from here because as soon as that yeast gets going, it'll really get going. And over the next seven days, five to seven days, that yeast is going to turn all the sugar within our beer into alcohol. So this now needs to go into uh, a warm cupboard and it needs to go there at about 20 degrees for about five to seven days. Now in about five to seven days, as I've noticed that there's no more bubbles coming up to the top and it's really settled down, I'm going to take a hydrometer reading with my trial jar and my hydrometer and over a three day period I'm going to make sure that my um, specific gravity has remained the same at about the 1.010, 1.014 mark. And that will tell me, hopefully, if it remains the same for three consecutive days, it's ready to barrel and bottle. So, just to reiterate, this goes into my warm cupboard now, about 20 degrees for the next five to seven days. It's been uh, approximately 10 days since I put the Smuggler Special into my warm cupboard. At day seven, I started taking some readings with my hydrometer, and uh, for the last three days, it's remained exactly the same, and so it's now time to look at barrel in the bottom. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because we've got a lot of sediment left in the bottom here, I can see it from uh, the outside of the bucket, I'm going to be transferring it into a second bucket that I've already sterilized. And to do that, I'm going to be using a simple siphon, uh, and on the end, I've got a sediment trap. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently lower it into the bottom here, or into the top of the beer. I'm not going to put it all the way down in, because what we're going to do is, James, back to me, as the, we, the beer drops down, as we're siphoning off, we're gradually going to lower our siphon into it and go, so we're always taking off the top, so we make sure we don't disturb any of the sediment at the bottom. So what we need to do now is give a good suck and let it flow. Now this takes a little bit of time to siphon it off into our bucket at the bottom, so you're going to need a little bit of something to quench your thirst, and I've only got a little bit of uh, cider left, so I hope it goes quickly. We finished siphoning off uh, the beer from our first bucket into our second bucket down here. It's left an absolute load of sediment and there's nothing we can do with that, so off that goes. So what are we going to do now? I'm going to take four ounces of sugar and I'm going to add that to my bucket of beer and I'm going to give it a good stir. This will dissolve the sugar in and this is our priming sugar. And this is going to help in our secondary fermentation. This is going to cause carbon dioxide when we bottle it and create um, our beer to become fizzy in our bottles. And when we barrel it, it's also going to create some carbon dioxide in the barrel. That will help when uh, we push it out of the barrel to create a good head on the beer. And secondly, it will also protect the beer from any bugs, bacteria, and nasty. So keep going until all of your sugar that you've just poured in is fully dissolved. And that was about four ounces of sugar I just poured in to the five gallons. So keep going until it's all dissolved. One of the things I find when I'm going to uh, bottle my beer is I pour it, take it into my second bucket which has got a tap on the bottom. Now on the bottom of my tap, it's perfectly fitted for this long little tube and on the bottom of this tube, come on in James, have a quick look at this is a special little valve and this is what's called a little bottler. Off you go. So this is uh, going to help me bottle beer because if we just used a siphon to take it from the top on in, pour it you know, into a siphon into the top of the, the bottle, what you invariably get with beer is you get a load and load of froth and a little bit of beer in the bottle. Absolute pain in the bottle. So what do we do with this? Well, uh, Take a seat, put that on, and turn our tap on. Down at the bottom, as I showed you, we've got a little valve. And what happens, come on in James, have a good look at this. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but as I press the bottle up, the beer starts to float. And because we're filling from the bottom rather than the top, we don't get any froth on the top. And because we don't get any froth on the top, it means we don't have to faff about with partially filling a bottle and then leaving the froth to settle and then coming back a few minutes later 
There you go. And all we do then is drop the bottle down. The valve stops the beer from flowing. We screw the top on. Easy as that. That's one bottle done. Got a few more bottles to do. So, whilst I do a few more bottles, I'm gonna have a quick drink. So I've bottled up a, a few bottles of our Smuggler Special, and that basically I'm gonna use in the shop. So you can come into uh, Brew Bits in Froome and you can have a taster. And uh, our guys there behind the counter will go and pour you off a glass. Um, but for myself, here I've got myself a uh, barrel, a keg, and I'm gonna put the rest of the beer into that. Now, I could quite easily just move it over like that, and open the tap and let it flow. But at this stage, you don't want to do that because you don't really want to introduce any more oxygen into the beer than you have to. So we're going to be using our siphon again. And this time, because I've taken off the sediment, I do not need to use the sediment trap. And this will mean that I make sure I get all the beer that's in my bucket and I leave nothing behind. So remember, I've already added into my bucket my priming sugar. So I don't need to add any more now. And all I'm going to do now, give it a good suck, and I'm going to let it flow. Big thing to remember, look down here James, we've got a tap. Make sure that you've uh, checked your tap is fully tight before you start pouring your beer into it. Check our other video on how to use a king keg. And secondly, make sure your tap is turned off, because before you know it, as I'm talking to you like this now, there would be beer flowing everywhere across the floor and suddenly I'm gonna be shouted at and screamed at by the other half about the mess I've just made and I'll have to mop it all up again. So, very important thing as well, whilst you're siphoning, have someone to keep you going. See you in a moment. Once you've finished barreling and bottling your smuggler special, we need to put the tops on. So I've just done a few bottles here. This is gonna be used for the shop. Make sure your top is really well on because you want a really good seal because that sugar that we added earlier, that's gonna react with the remaining yeast that's uh, suspended in our beer. And that's gonna start eating the sugar again. And that's gonna create some carbon dioxide and create a nice head of carbon dioxide on the top here. So in about a month's time, when we pour our first pint of beer off, you'll find you'll get a really good head. So what do we do with our bottles and our barrel now? Well, we need to put this back into my warm cupboard and I tend to like to put it in there for at least 48 hours. Ideally, for me, I like to do it for a week and leave it in my warm cupboard there and that's gonna allow the yeast to, to get to work and create the secondary fermentation. Once it's been in the warm cupboard for at least 48 hours, ideally one week, we then transfer it to somewhere nice and cool, and that's going to allow then the beer to start to um, clear. So, in about a month's time after we've put it in our cool place, it'll be ready to pull your first pint of beer off, pop open a bottle, and enjoy. Happy brewing!